Paano po ba kung ang tao inaasahan mo magpapagaling sa'yo ay siya rin pong may sakit? Will be, he or she will be competent to give the optimal health care for their patients. Mr. Chair, alam po natin na pupunta po sa ospital ang mga tao dahil sila po ay may mga karamdaman. Ang mas senior ay inaabuso ang mas junior sa kanila. Mr. Chair, I'm deeply, deeply concerned because apparently dalawa na po na aking balabalitaan na residents na nag-commit po ng suicide. As I have uh, said many times before, uh, establishing and upgrading public health facilities should not be treated as a burden but an investment. Dapat matuto tayo sa mga nakaraang uh, nangyari sa buhay natin nung panahon ng pandemya kung saan nabigla talaga tayo sa ating healthcare system. At uh, Secretary Ted, maalala ko po uh, nung uh, budget deliberation nung uh, 2019 para po sa 2020, ang uh, sinabmit po ng Department of Health na binawasan po na pondo ng Department of Health, yung RITM. At uh, kutub ko lang po nung panahon yon Hindi po ako pumayag na bawasan, ni-restore natin at dinagdaga natin. And we would expect na ang RITM po ang pinaka-importanting opisina ng Department of Health ng panahon yon Yun po nagkakandak ng test, pinapadala pa sa Australia. It took uh, the Department of Health one week bago makuha yung resulta. Yung, yung hearing na yon that was November po ng December 19. Wala pang COVID. So kutub ko lang po yon na huwag bawasan ang RITM. Sino bang magkakala pagdating ng 2020? March 7, nag-declare po ng state of health emergency uh, sa COVID. So ang RITM po, ang pinaka-importanteng opisina. Lessons learned po yun sa atin na dapat po mas handa tayo. At ako naman po bilang inyong chairman ng Committee on Health, full support naman po ako sa ating uh, Department of Health. Lalong-lalo na po yung mga makakatulong sa mga mahirap nating kababayan. Yun lang po ang pakiusap ko sa inyo. Uh, gamitin niyo po yung pera ng gobyerno sa mga mahirap. At dapat po ang mga mahirap nating kababayan ang makikinabang dito sa mga hospital na ito. Hindi naman po pupunta rito yung mga mayayaman sa totoo lang po, sir. Unahin natin yung mga mahirap, yung mga helpless at hopeless nating kababayan. Huwag nating antayin na ang panibagong pandemya na nampon darating. Kailangan natin maging handa at hindi natin dapat hintayin na tuluyan ang bumigay ang ating healthcare system at malagay sa panganib ang buhay ng ating mga kababayan. It is for this reason uh, that last Congress, we passed 69 laws for the upgrade and establishment of various public hospitals all over the country. As Vice Chair of the Committee on Finance, I also want to particularly highlight that with the DOH and with the help of my fellow legislators, we have included in the budget the construction of more than 700 super health centers from 2022 up to 2024. At yun po yung gusto rin natin marinig mamaya kung ano na po ang updates nito. Uh, natapos na ba ito? At hindi po ito dapat maging white elephant na wala pong uh, mangyayari na katayo lang dyan at hindi naman po siya magiging operational. Super health centers are designed to focus on primary care, consultation, and early detection. Sa PhilHealth naman po, gamit na gamit po ito para sa konsulta package po ng ating DOH. Diyan na po magpapakonsulta sa mga super health centers. At uh, lahat naman tayo, lahat ng Pilipino po ay membro ng PhilHealth. So, iyan po yung konsulta. Anyway, Sa super health center, dyan po yung early detection, further strengthening the healthcare sector in the country, especially in grassroots communities. They are in line with the Universal Health Care Act, dyan na po yung primary care, to strengthen primary health care services and to decongest our public hospitals. Maari din po magamit ito sa konsulta program po ng PhilHealth. Last year, we also principally sponsored and are one of the authors of Republic Act 11959, also known as the Regional Specialty Centers Act, which mandates the establishment of regional specialty centers within existing DOH regional hospitals. Priority po ito ng ating mahal na Pangulong Bongbong Marcos, ito pong uh, specialty centers, and Senate President uh, Migs uh, Subiri. Ito po yung mga pinangako nila nung nakaraang eleksyon na magkaroon po ng mga specialty centers sa buong Pilipinas. We envision having specialty centers or units within existing DOH hospitals such as heart center, kidney center, lung centers. With this, patients would no longer need to travel all the way to Manila to avail of specialized health services. Gusto ko lang po isight sa Cebu. Meron na po silang heart center sa Davao. Ang ganda po. Congratulations, Secretary, sa, sa 
uh, Cagayan, magkakaroon na rin po ng heart uh, center doon. Sa Buwanga, magkakaroon po. Hindi na nila kailangan magbiyahe pa ng uh, Metro Manila sa pagpapaopera sa puso. Uh, these efforts stand as a testament to the commitment of the government to uplift our nation's uh, health infrastructure. Additionally, we also passed Republic Act 11463 or the Malasakit Centers Act to ensure that medical assistance will be available to patients in public hospitals, particularly in DOH hospitals. Uh, kakabukas lang po ng uh, 160th and 161st Malasakit Center sa Dabao Occidental General Hospital nung biyernes at sa Johnny Villanueva kahapon rin po sa Bukawi. So, uh, mas magiging accessible po ang uh, tulong mula sa ating uh, uh, DOH at sa iba't pang ahensya ng gobyerno. Dahil dyan po sa Malasakit Center, dyan na po sa loob ng hospital, yung PhilHealth, PCSO, DOH at DSWD. At yan po ang aking uh, pinapakiusap po sa inyo, Secretary, uh, noon pa po. Uh, dyan, dyan naman po ang budget ng uh, Department of Health. Napakalaki po ng budget ng Department of Health. Tulungan po yung mga uh, kababayan nating uh, mahirap, mga helpless, hopeless. At wag po nating ayaan na maghihingalo po sila, wala silang matakbuhan and finally um, malagutan ng hininga dahil wala na po silang mahinga ng tulong. Andiyan po ang pera ng gobyerno, itulong po natin sa kanila. At uh, salamat Secretary Ted sa inyong commitment na wala pong pasyente nga uh, matatanggihan sa mga uh, DOH uh, hospitals. Saksi po ako sa kalagayan ng ating mga kababayan sa pag-iikot ko sa mga hospital. Nakakapan lumo kung makita na yung mga pas ibang pasyente po nasa koridor, isang kama, dalawang pasyente. Dahil walang available na kama. Kaya po, yun yung pag-usapan natin dito, upgrading of hospitals. Some hospitals have already exceeded their bed occupancy rate with some reaching as high as 400%. Kawawa po ang kalagayan nila. Bukod sa problema kung paano mapabilis ang kanilang pagaling, nagiging issue rin po dito yung hawaan ng sakit, pati na rin po ang kalusugan at seguridad ng ating mga healthcare workers. The local hospitals in our agenda today for the establishment or upgrade of public hospitals would help in our endeavor to strengthen our health infrastructure. Importante po na maging operational ang mga health facilities at masiguro na kayang pondohan ang mga ito. Baka approve po tayo ng approve ng mga batas pero wala naman pong uh, budget kaya po napaka-importante ng finance dito at ng ating uh, DBM. We don't want white elephants. We need operational health facilities para sa ating mga kababayan, para sa mga mahirap nating kababayan. With that being said, funding for the upgrade and establishment of these hospitals for discussion should be ensured so that this would not just be unfunded loss. To clarify, supportado ko po ang mga ito as long as makakabuti sa ating mga kababayan. Naniniwala naman po ako na bawat pasilidad na itatayo o upgrade ay marami po makikinabang. Ngunit kailangan natin siguruduin na kaya nating ma-implement po ito. I also take note of the concerns of our Senate President, Mig Subiri, that despite the popularity of our uh, tourist destinations and their contribution to the growth of our economy, most of these areas still lack the necessary medical facilities and personnel to ensure the health and safety not only of domestic and foreign tourists, but also of its uh, local inhabitants. This concern is very justified concern. I just want to share that we have uh, earlier passed and sponsored Republic Act 11500, which establishes the Siargao Island Medical Center. Maganda po yun. Ini, uh, ini improve nyo pa po nga. We acknowledge that uh, much has to be done to address this concern, and we would like to know the plans of the DOH dito. To a larger extent, we would also like to be updated on the implementation of the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan as part of the oversight function. functions of this committee. It is incumbent upon us to know the status of various health facilities projects in the country and determine the state of our healthcare system. Uh, malaga rin po ang uh, papel ng ating uh, DPWH dito. Well, I heard yung mga malalaking uh, amount ay kayo na po ang mag-implement dito. So kailangan po, we should uh, complement each other ang ating uh, DOH at ang ating DPWH. Mahalaga po, mabantayan natin ang ating mga health facilities. If necessary, I will call for a monthly hearing or even weekly to check the progress of programs involving health. Dahil pera po ito ng gobyerno, pera po ito ng Pilipino. According to the Philippine Health Facilities Development Plan, about 50% of the total barangays in the country do not have a barangay health station. Around 53% of the population do not have access to a 
rural health unit within uh, 30 minutes. Kaya tayo nagsulong na may patayo po itong mga super health centers sa iba't ibang parte ng bansa. We want to be updated ilan na dyan ang natapos na, ilan na po ang ongoing at ilan na po ang hindi pa nagsisimula. The plan also envisions that all provinces and highly urbanized cities should have at least level 1 and level 2 hospitals. However, of the 114 provinces and cities, 33 or 29% lack level 2 hospitals as of 2019. Meanwhile, Barm, Caraga, and Mimaropa do not have level 3 hospital. Kaya gusto nating malaman ano pa po ba ang priorities ng DOH sa mga proyektong popondohan. As of September 2023, 43% pa lang po ng uh, HPEP para sa 2023 ang na-utilize. At tayo po ay nasa 2024 na po, matatapos na po ang first quarter. Gusto rin nating malaman kung ano na po ang update dito. Bakit mabagal po ang paggamit ng pondo? May problema ba sa lupa? May problema ba sa implementasyon? These are also reports that some health facilities that were constructed suffer from substandard quality. Paano ba babantayan ng DOH ang responsibilidad ng mga contractor? Lastly, we shall also discuss the resolutions of Senator Rabi Tulpo first on the alleged bullying in the hospital uh, hierarchy affecting clerks, interns, residents, nurses, and other medical professionals. And second, the need for medical facilities to be transparent in their costing of services, facilities, treatment, and medicines in order for the government to regulate their prices and inform the people in the choice of medical uh, uh, treatment. Uh, magtulungan po sana tayo para makapagbigay tayo ng maayos na serbisyo sa ating mga kababayan. Do my uh, fellow senators have any opening uh, remarks, uh, Senator Rafi? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> good morning, Mr. Chair. And good morning to my fellow legislators in the House of Representatives, Congressman David Suarez, Congressman Albert Garcia, Congressman Juan Fidel Nograles, Congresswoman Maria Lucille Nava, Congressman Jose Francisco Benitez, Congresswoman Christine Alexi Tutor, Congressman Mujib S. Ataman, Congresswoman Ruth Hernandez, Congressman Florida Robes, Congressman Alfonso Mali, and Congressman G.P. Padiernos. And welcome to our resource persons and guests. Thank you for making time for today's hearing. Isa lang po ang tanong ko ngayong araw na ito. Paano po ba kung ang tao inaasahan mo magpapagaling sa'yo ay siya rin pong may sakit? Will be he or she will be competent to give the optimal health care for their patients. Mr. Chair, alam po natin na pupunta po sa ospital ang mga tao dahil sila po ay may mga karamdaman. Karamdaman, which could be physical injuries, illnesses, and other health concerns, or even mental health concerns. But it seems that there is a sickness going around in hospitals. That's affecting our medical frontliners. At ang tinutukoy ko po ay ang kalamak na pambubuli sa mga ospital, sa mga first-year resident doctors, interns, and sometimes non-physician staff. Marami na pong nakarating sa akin report na mga ganitong kalakaran sa iba't ibang ospital, private man o public, dito sa Metro Manila at sa iba pang lugar. Let me first lay down the basis. Mr. Chair, it seems na may practice sa mga ospital na mga first-year residents, yung mga first-year at second-year, usually, they experience bullying from their senior counterparts. Ang sabi nila, ito daw ay practice na. At ito din naman ang kibit-balikat na sagot sa mga residents na ito na mga nakakatanda sa kanila at tuwing sila'y umaalma. Ganyan lang talaga. Kailangan pagdaanan nyo rin. Pinagdaanan namin yan, matatapos din yan. Ano po ba kasi itong pambubuli na nangyari? Ang mas senior ay inaabuso ang mas junior sa kanila. Para bang initiation sa mga fraternity? Halimbawa na lang, pinambibili ng personal na gamit, merienda at pamalengke ng mga seniors. Bumibili ng grocery para sa pantry out of their own pockets. Sinusundo ang kanilang consultant sa bahay at hinaatid na para sila ay mga chuper. Kaya minsan, ayaw umamin ng mga juniors, ng mga residents na ito, na marunong sila mag-drive. Pinag-babysit ng anak ng consultant. Pinapahiya 
Sinisigawan nila lait in front of many people, including patients. Pinaglilinis ng CR. Pinagta-time in para sa konsulta na hindi pa dumarating. Pinaglilinis pa ng kondo ng konsulta. And I also remember, Mr. Chair, sa UST noon, may intern na narape ng senior resident matapos o dyukan na sumama sa inuman. At ang mga eras na ito are done both during work hours instead of doing actual work for the hospital and during personal hours when the junior resident is supposed to take the rest. Mr. Chair, this toxic practice might have stemmed from a tradition where the senior residents or consultants intended to teach discipline, hard work, and grit to the neophyte doctors. Unfortunately, this tradition has gone out of hand and has gone beyond medical training. The duties being assigned are no longer medical related, going beyond the bounds of labor law and are violations already of the code of ethics of medical practitioners. And frankly, it is no longer healthy. Ibang level na po ito. The toxic environment can no longer be ignored. Mr. Chair, I'm deeply, deeply concerned because apparently, dalawa na po na aking malambalitaan na residents na nag-commit po ng suicide sa isang public hospital, sikat na public hospital sa Quezon City at isa pong resident sa isang public hospital sa Manila. Balit tatlo na po ang nagpakamatay dahil stress, dahil palaging pinapahiya, dahil sila po ay depressed na. It seems that they were not able that that they are able they were not able to handle the stress during the residency training. Kinaya po nilang stress sa pag-aaral ng medicine, pag-take the board exam at kung ano pa. They already what they already have what it takes. But what broke them is the toxic environment during their residency. While I'm sure that it is, this is not true for all circumstances. There are too many reports that have reached me to say that this is an isolated case. We have to protect our medical frontliners by helping them to work in a healthy environment. The nature of their work is highly stressful already. Dapat di na nagdadagdagan pa. Kasi po, Mr. Chair, Napapasa po nila itong stress na ito sa kanilang mga pasyente. Siyempre, pag stress po ang mga resident doctors, yan po ay napapasa sa kanilang mga pasyente. Matatandaan ko po, Mr. Chair, in, hindi ko na mabilang, ang mga pasyente pupunta sa akin, nagreklamo dahil ang susuplada-suplado ra po ng mga doktor lalo sa mga public hospitals, nakasibangot, naninigaw. Malaman lamang ko, Those are resident doctors. Siguro, sila po ay nakararas ng pambubuli. Sila po ay sinisigawan. Pinapahiya ng kanila mga seniors. Kaya, nagkakaroon po ng chain reaction. Pagdating nila sa harap ng mga pasyente, kagagaling lang sila sinigawan ng kanilang seniors. Ipapasa po sa mga pasyente, maninigaw din po sa mga pasyente. Yan po ang nangyari madalas na isinusumbong sa akin, mga resident doctors, especially itong mga bagito, naninigaw daw. Ibig sabihin, yun po ay chain reaction lamang doon sa mga nangyari sa kanila mula sa kanilang seniors. Mr. Chair, since the tradition is something coming from above, those from above the hospital hierarchy must take responsibility. The chair of each department exercises supervision and control over those beneath them. I am sure alam nila ito ang kalakaran na ito. They should lay down standards within their department. Number two, The hospital administration must also work with them to provide a policy for the entire hospital where bullying is not to be tolerated. The hospital administrator, including the board, must take care of their people. Number three, the DOH, as the regulating department agency, must ensure that all hospitals have fixed guidelines in the implementation of the residency training. And there must be strict implementation of this. Also. The DOH must continue to supervise both public and private hospitals. There are instances where the selections of the heads of the LGU hospitals are left to the discretion of the local government unit. The DOH must make sure that those running the hospitals 
are capable of maintaining a healthy, efficient, and professional workplace for our doctors. Hindi pwedeng padri-padrino kung sino ang naging hospital administrator, administrators, kasi kung hindi, walang gagawin mga yan para ayusin mga problema sa hospital. The Professional Regulation Commission has the power to discipline our physicians. They are tasked to make sure that our doctors comply with their code of ethics. Pero ang balita ko po, ang mga disciplinary cases sa PRC ay napakabagal daw po gumalaw, parang pagong. Ang mga kasong nafafile ay doon lang nagtatapos dahil nainip na din ang mga party sa tagal. Meron pa akong mga balita na nagfile ng complaint ng isang resident doctor's first year. Nakapag-graduate na siya and all, naging surgeon na siya, hindi pa natatapos yung kanyang complaint. All pa sa din, pa abroad na siya, saka pa lang dumating at naaksyonan yung kanyang reklamo. Ganun na po kabagal ang pagpile ng kaso sa PRC. At yan po naman ay sinangayunan ng ilang pang mga nakausap ko na mga complainant. Kung meron man minsan inaabot daw sa isang taon, yan na po sinasabi ko. Suggested action. Mr. Chair, I want to see to see that this practice stops. Pero mahirap po dito, gaya sa lahat ng forms of bullying, walang nagsusumbong. Takot magsalita mga tao dahil ito mga biktima will still continue to work in their industry. They do not want to burn bridges and be branded as difficult to work with. And so, let me say it out loud for them. Ayusin po natin ito. First, I hope that there will be guidelines and rules for the residency training in hospitals. There must be mechanism for this to be implemented strictly. Second, I want strengthened grievance machinery in hospitals. Hindi yung sa papel lang may grievance machinery. The employees of hospital must be comfortable and must feel safe when they run to these grievance machineries. Third, I implore upon PRC to look into the disciplinary procedure of our doctors. In this line, let me raise my concern in my other resolutions. Kasama po sa pag-improve ng health service natin is to infuse support for hospitals through the universal health care. I would like to ask PhilHealth regarding the implementation of the rating system of health facilities in Section 27 of the Universal Health Care Act. There is a provision requiring PhilHealth to establish a rating system under the incentive scheme to acknowledge and reward health facilities that provide better service, efficiency, and equity. That's all, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po.